Hello and welcome to our next video um, where we are celebrating the success of the 2020 Excellence in Procurement Award winners um, and also hopefully trying to encourage you to enter again for this year. Uh, so we've got a great case study um, now from Salvation Army and they were winners of uh, the Procurement Team of the Year for small organisations. So I'm joined by Steve and Aidy from the Salvation Army. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'll hand over to you guys uh, to tell us a little bit more about your project, your winning submission, and then I'll come back and ask you some questions. So Steve and Aidy, over to you. Thanks, Emma. Um, the Salvation Army procurement team were absolutely thrilled and delighted to, uh, to win this award. Uh, we gathered together in a socially uh, distanced room last September and, uh, and learned that we'd won the award and it gave the team such a fantastic boost. Um, the Salvation Army, uh, like virtually every other organization across the, the world, um, had a really tough year last year, um, but this was just a fantastic uh, uh, celebration to, uh, to be able to share uh, this award with the team and with the wider organization. And uh, Salvation Army's probably been through the, the toughest, uh, most challenging time that it's experienced in, in post-war history. So to have this award was, was absolutely brilliant. Um, the team was founded in 2016 by my predecessor, Andrew Roper, who really should uh, take all the accolades for, for this uh, award and, uh, and our success. Um, back in 2016, the Salvation Army uh, recognised that uh, the decentralised non-professional approach to procurement was creating some significant uh, commercial, op op operational and um, reputational risks and that there was a need to bring in some professional procurement. So the team was formed uh, and uh, Andrew built the team up from, from that point in time and um, the Salvation Army is a very complex organisation. Um, most people don't realise just how, how complicated and uh, uh, it, it is. There's 750 churches around the UK, over 80 life houses caring for a number of vulnerable uh, communities, including ex-offenders, uh, people that have come from uh, um, uh, care system, young people that have been taken out of the care system, uh, uh, people that uh, have been the subject of domestic violence um, and uh, in addition we have a chain of care homes, uh, we have services that help people get back into employment, we've recently uh, won for the second time the home office contract to care for the victims of modern day slavery and anti-trafficking and the procurement team services all of these individual functions in various different ways. Um, the approach has been to try to upskill uh, users, budget holders, uh, to create a common approach to procurement, common ways of working. And uh, we've developed a, a training course, which we've rolled out to uh, most of our stakeholders called Helping the Salvation Army Buy Better, where we share the model of procurement that we're, we, we're working to around maximizing value and uh, protecting the risks of the organization and the the key strategic critical lines are procured centrally but we support budget holders in their tactical day-to-day -day, uh, procurement operations um, as a result of covid we had to pivot literally overnight to face into a whole new set of challenges including sourcing ppe for hundreds of uh, frontline workers uh, in, in homeless services, in care homes, and uh, in, in the churches that were running food bank operations and uh, drop-in services. And um, Aging Clear is with me today, who is going to be sharing uh, with you the work that the procurement team did to support him in running a, a food bank operation during COVID. Overnight, the food bank operation moved from a donated cottage industry to a much more centralized network of food distribution across 22 uh, regional food hubs within the Salvation Army. So I'm gonna hand over Aidy now, who'll tell you a bit more about that. Thank you, Steve. Um, yes, we literally went with that request uh, overnight. Uh, the idea was that the Salvation Army's got 22 different divisions uh, we've broken into across the UK. Um, and those large number of frontline centers usually give out food to people uh, who are suffering and, and struggling, you know, anyway, as a matter of course. But because of the huge demand that um, came out of 
COVID, um, we had to make sure that the donated food that was given at a local level was topped up uh, in a significant way. So we approached Steve and the team um, and within two, two and a half weeks, I reckon, um, they were able to set up a wholesale food distribution network for us in the middle of a pandemic at the time when food shortages in the supply chain were, were at their very worst. Uh, and that was a huge challenge, but these guys just stepped out of the mark. They used their networks. They used every bit of um, cajoling and everything they, they could possibly do um, to get this set up and running. And we've been going ever since. Uh, demand hasn't really waned that much. Uh, you know, we've had a quietish period over the summer, but most of the rest of the time, it's been very, very busy. And the food that these guys have procured, um, there's been over a million meals worth that have gone out to support people out there. And that is on top of anything uh, our Salvation Army centres on the ground are being given in terms of in-kind donations. And Steve um, on, on the call here has been instrumental in making really good links uh, with you know, the likes of Debenhams, um, Whitbread, other large corporates, uh, and linking them up in terms of donated food with our centres. You know, uh, I can give you a personal example. My parents uh, up in Northamptonshire were, were um, shielding in the first part of this and yeah, getting hold of supplies and things was quite difficult. Uh, they were struggling with all the, the ways to try and get it. Um, Savage Army officer locally turns up with eggs, bread and, and other things that, that have been donated locally. And I knew full well from talking to Steve earlier in the day that on a national basis, you know, he, he had been having discussions that meant some of these things were actually arriving on people's doorsteps. So that's a personal um, cameo as far as that's concerned. But the families that we're looking after at the moment, an awful lot of them have never, ever been uh, in a situation where they'd be without food, where they'd be struggling to pay their mortgages and that side of things. So, you know, a huge amount more people are turning to the Salvation Army and others. And we've been able to step up to the plate because the likes of Steve and his team have used every bit of, of knowledge um, and personal uh, expertise to get, get this going and make sure that our guys have what, got what they need on the ground to help people who are really, really struggling at the moment. Okay, thanks for that, AD. And I'd like to just add my personal thanks to three or four key uh, corporate uh, relationships that were forged very, very quickly uh, in support of the pandemic. Uh, Aidy's uh, alluded to them briefly, but I'd particularly like to thank uh, Debenhams and in particular Sam Shutt, uh, the uh, partnerships uh, manager at Debenhams, who gave us a huge amount of assistance in making uh, food available at the across Debenhams 124 stores that they weren't able to sell also like to thank uh, colleagues at Whitbread uh, Food Logistics and Whitbread Restaurants and Premier Inn and uh, colleagues also at um, Morrison's Wholesale who have really gone the extra mile for us and supported AD in making deliveries to a number of uh, our hubs around the length and breadth of the UK. So this, uh, this has been a, a great opportunity to publicly thank those organisations. Um, we could have talked to you a lot about process, uh, about people, um, uh, about systems and procedures. Um, and uh, all of those things have been built in since 2016 behind the scenes. But I thought giving this, uh, this little case study of uh, the, the work that we've done with AD and his colleagues would um, perhaps more powerfully demonstrate the effectiveness of the procurement operation in the Salvation Army. One of the mottos of the Salvation Army is faith in action. And I hope what we've been able to share with you this afternoon and the, the background work that procurement have put in have been able to demonstrate that being delivered in spades to the sharp end where it's needed most. Um, I hope uh, hope you found that helpful. Emma, over to you. Brilliant. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Aidy. Such a great story. Honestly, the judges were blown away with with how responsive and, and how quickly you you guys as 
teams responded to to the situation and um, got all those in, important food parcels out to those that needed it in, in a quick way. It was, it was absolutely blew everyone's minds, to be honest. So very well done to everyone that um, was involved in, the, in that project. And I think it was the responsiveness and, and the, the quick action that, um, and really thinking outside the box, reaching out all to those organisations who, who were happily to get involved and, and, and help you in that. It's really heartwarming story. It's great. So, um, so I, I guess you were all tuned in when we announced the awards. How, how did it feel when, when you finally heard that um, your name was called out and you were the winners? Well, it was a, a fantastic boost to the team. We're really grateful to the judges for selecting us. And uh, the team were just so excited uh, a, a, about getting the award. And there was a big cheer around the room. So uh, yeah, it was uh, it was the absolute highlight of the of the year, and certainly I would say the highlight of the existence of the procurement team. I think it, everybody felt it was a, a a recognition of all the hard work that had gone in uh, right right from the start. It was the culmination of a journey that that we'd been on, and so we were just thrilled. Excellent. Uh, what advice would you give for anyone who's thinking of entering this year? Would you? go for it <laughs> any tips yes, absolutely i would um I, I think just the experience of entering is is very very helpful it makes you track in organizations huge amounts of things go on and when you sit down and actually start to compile an entry you realize just what's been achieved so it's a it's a great way of of, of reviewing everything you've done uh, of celebrating what you've done and um obviously you know there's there's a limited number of winners in the different categories but i would encourage anybody who feels that uh what they've done uh should perhaps be more widely recognized to to make an entry and steve and ad i mean ad you said that you guys um had barely worked together before this project um and i guess bringing the power of procurement uh, to the forefront of, of different areas of of the organization has really helped with working on projects such as this well absolutely and you know the fact that we've been able to come together so easily and um, these guys don't make a fuss about anything they just go on and do it and they make they make that stuff arrive out there where it's needed and that's fantastic but the other side of things you know away from the food you know obviously for charities at the moment it's a huge financial um difficulty you know compared to other years so the difference these guys are able to make in you know negotiating down contracts and trying to get really good support from other people you know that's fantastic yeah excellent um, and long may it continue the good work that you that you all do it's fantastic thank you for sharing your story with us today it was really inspirational and, and i hope it's inspired some people to to enter the awards for this year such a worthy project uh, and some great results um so thank you very much i just hope that this this project has inspired you uh, so go onto the awards website, um, download the, the enter pack, uh, find out which um, categories best suit you. And I look forward to reading your submissions as well. Thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you.